not totally. The security is there. But I was sitting there on the steps, looking at the rolling mountain falls, the hills, and thinking, this is home. It was here that I learned a lot. It was here that I learned the importance of education. Education is the point at which we decide whether we love the world enough to assume responsibility <laughs> for it, and by the same token, save it from ruin which except for renewal, except for building up capacity to question, to explore, to view the world from other standpoint, it would be inevitable. Education too is when we decide whether we love our children enough not to expel them from our world and leave them abandoned. It was at Booster that I learned about the equality of opportunity, the capacity to become different, I learned that there's a lot of reviewing required, using of imaginations and taking of responsibility. When I went back home, I felt very alone. I do not wish to imply nobody cared, but I just want to say that in spite of the good intentions of the academics and ministries, children were actually traumatized by what we call education in modern India. East looks west and west looks east, and yet there's a learning crisis in global education. In spite of education for all, no child left behind, every student succeeds at Sarva Shiksha Abhyan, millions of children world over still can't read, write, and do basic maths. This learning crisis, instead of shortening the social gap is increasing it. Children from economically vulnerable backgrounds, social minority, the girl child, who are already disadvantaged by their circumstances, reach adult adulthood lacking in the most basic life skills. Somebody had to act. And I have a very simple mantra, and that is, if not me, then who? My grandmother used to tell me the story about one day, the earth was about to experience darkness for the first time. And the people began to panic. And they said, the sun will set and darkness will cover everything. What will happen to us? Darkness became arrogant and wanted to show its might. It set its foot on earth and people began to hide. But in one little hut, very far away in a corner, one little lamb raised its head and proclaimed, I challenge you, darkness. I will be the light for people. If nothing else, I won't allow you to settle around me. I will establish light around me. Watching this, the other lamps in every hut in the world rose, and the world watched in amazement. These little lamps <coughs> stopped darkness from expanding. I believe Understanding our motivation, we apply a way to limit or to liberate. Social imagination, for me, is liberation. Imagination is what allows for empathy, for understanding other people's feelings, to begin a new interaction with the world. Social imagination allows us to envision life different from the one which we live. There is one beautiful story I read while I was doing my research. It's about a little boy and his, and his father. They got into the train, a little like our local trains, and there was absolutely no place in there. Somehow the father got the guy, little kid, to sit down, gave him a paper and a pen, and said, draw. This little kid looked around, and after a moment, he started drawing. After a bit, the father asked him, what are you drawing? So he said, Dad, I'm drawing you sitting in the train next to me. So the father said, there is no place on this train. So he said, not this train, the train in my drawing. In my train, there is a place for everyone to sit. <laughs>